Does your internet give you unlimited wireless with 5G? Of course, and my wireless saves me 400 bucks a year. That's because you both have Xfinity. Internet and wireless so good, it keeps one-upping itself. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $20 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Get $300 back when you add Xfinity Mobile. Plus, save up to $400 a year on wireless over AT&T. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. It's 11, 15, 21. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus. Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Savings based on optimized pricing. Xfinity Internet required. $300 offerings. 11, 21, 21. Requires new line activation. Other restrictions apply. You are listening to a Jordan Communications station with locations in Noonan, Georgia, WQEE 99.1 FM, Classic Rock and Sports, LaGrange, Georgia, and Lynette, Alabama's WBRQ 91.9 FM, Gospel and Blues, Lineville, Alabama's WZEV 90.5 FM, Solid Gold Hit, Andalusia, Alabama's WDWZ 89.3 FM, Big Talk in Andalusia. Jordan Communication also owns and operates WQMK TV 18, home of Retro TV Classic. Serving Opelika, Auburn, and Lynette, Alabama, West Point, Georgia. Coming soon, JC Sports Networks, home of Southern Sports. And in the near future, Rush TV Network, featuring action and horror classics on the internet and Ruko TV. Continue to tune in for more with Jordan Communications, your number one local entertainment broadcast stations. WQE 99.1 FM Noonan, WBRQ LaGrange, WZV 90.5 FM Lionville, JC Sports Network. Tune in Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 1030 to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show hosted by me, Ariel Green. Each week, we'll learn ways to be more sustainable in our everyday lives. We'll discuss exciting environmental news, ways to get involved locally, and we'll hear from women of color who are saving the planet in their own unique ways. Be sure to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show every Thursday at 10 a.m. First, they said cigarettes were safe. We know how that turned out. Now, they say they didn't market e-cigarettes to teens. Fact, more than one in four high school students are vaping, and 80% say their first e-cigarette was flavored. Vaping is harmful to developing brains. The reason we think vaping is safe? Marketing. Same lies, different day. Tell Big Vape to quit lying. Tune in every Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. on WQEE 99.1 FM for Health, Happiness, and Harmony Hour with your host, Dr. Lewis Boynton. Dr. Boynton will have insights on a healthy way of living, physically and mentally. The doctor is in each and every Wednesday, 10 a.m. and to 11 a.m. Health, Happiness, and Harmony with Dr. Lewis Boynton. Hello, this is Pastor Arthur James McFarland inviting you to listen to Applying the Word Ministry radio broadcast every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. right here on WQEE 99.1 on your FM dial. Listen in. Let's have church. Hello, this is co-pastor Patricia McFarlane from Applying the Word Ministry. I would like to invite you to tune in to the Sunday School Teacher each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on this station, WQEE. We will review the weekly lesson, so tune in, I said, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. For the Sunday School Teacher, I'll be waiting for you. Hey, I'm Jimmy Ellison. I'm the pastor here at Noonan City Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to our website and hope that you'll take the time to look throughout the website, all the different activities that are going on in the life of our church. Our purpose statement here at Noonan City is transforming lives for Jesus' sake. And we believe that takes place in three separate pillars. The first one is corporate worship. And we come together each Sunday for our worship services where our focus is on glorifying God. That is the, the purpose, the focus of our, of our um, worship services each Sunday. The second pillar is local missions. And we believe that church is not to be contained inside the walls of a building, but rather outside those walls. And we look for opportunities and we have different partners in the community where we partner with other kingdom-minded ministries that are doing kingdom work. And so encouraging our individuals here at the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus outside the walls of our congregation. 
So that's the second pillar. And the third pillar is our community groups, our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here in Noonan. And the focus of these groups is, is simply Bible study, it's sitting in the circle, opening up the scriptures, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us as we study God's Word. So those are the three pillars, and we believe when you do those three things that there's a transformation that takes place in your life. And that will transform your own family and transform our community, and thus making a difference for the sake of Jesus. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you Sunday. I'm Apostle Deborah Harris, Pastor Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia, presenting Connecting the Kingdom, connecting kingdom citizens, kingdom businesses, and advancing the kingdom of God in this hour. Join us each Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are Sharing their faith, business, and ministry. Now presenting Connecting the Kingdom. Good evening, good morning, radio audience. I am Apostle Deborah Harris at Kingdom Connected Ministries International, and I am in the studio today with a very special guest. I am going to let her introduce herself to you, and she and I will talk about the Good News Club and just talking about the things of God and talking about how necessary it is to get our kids involved at all ages and, and at all levels, uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school. So I have Susan in the studio with me today, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. So Susan, tell the radio audience something about you and what you're doing. Okay, I am just a regular mom okay. um, who is a believer in Jesus, yes. and uh, I had the opportunity to go into the schools and, and head up a good news club, and I just stepped into it with my three youngest children who were teenagers at the time. I, I love the idea of doing ministry together with them, yes. and we had such a good time. Uh, we took the Good News Club is with Child Evangelism Fellowship, non-denominational. Okay. Several different denominational churches will sponsor a club. Okay. And then they will have their volunteers go in, and the children, their parents can choose for them to come. It's an after-school club. It doesn't ever cost anything. Okay. And they come in, and they hear the good news that God has given to us in the awesome. Bible that Jesus awesome. is the Savior. Awesome. That is so awesome. And I love the fact that you started it with your children and you and I were talking before we actually came on the broadcast, and you shared that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you shared that all three of your children uh, have done missionary work and still doing missionary work? Yes, some of them. I have seven. Okay. And these are my three youngest ones. Okay. So awesome. um, some of my older children are in different places in the world. Um, okay. Madagascar and Spain. Some have been in Russia. Okay. Um, and they're they're sharing that same message that Jesus is the Savior and will give you eternal life by believing in Him. Amen. And that is so awesome. That is so awesome to to uh, start this club and share your faith with your children, and then they grow up and they're able to do the same thing. Mm. That is so awesome. So Susan. Um, you started, uh, you well, not started the club, but you worked um, with child evangelism and you were sponsoring the uh, club uh, at one of the schools here in the county. And uh, you had a pretty good turnout, right? Yes, of, of children coming to the club the first year. All year long, we had 12 children. Wow. But the second year, it grew to in the 20s and then in the 30s. And wow. Um, it stayed about the, the high 30s, low 40s after that. Wow. So you started out with 12 disciples. All year and long, they 12. Built, yeah. And yes. they went out and they spread the yeah. gospel and, they, and then your, your club grew. And that is awesome. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, I think that's, that's kind of cute to start out with 12 all year. <laughs> like the 12 disciples and then you're able to 
um, reach even more the next year. And you know, that's how things are. You start small and you grow. But you, when you start small, you have to stick with it. You can't start and say, oh my gosh, it's, you know, pulling your hair out and thinking, I, you know, this thing is not going anywhere. Why do I not have more kids? It should be more kids because we know that the kid that, that the schools I have, um, I'm going to say anywhere from about 400 plus students at the school. So you're thinking, wow, I should have more. But it's always good to start out small, build it, know how you're going to do it, get a feel of it and grow in doing it and then you're ready for that growth that comes that you know will come right that that's exactly we just knew that god would bring yeah he would grow it as he needed to and i had to sit back and say if i only had one child i have seven if i only had one would i pour less into that one child no i'd pour everything i had into that child so if we only had one come to club or five come to club we would pour everything we had into those children into that one child that is so awesome. And I think that's a lesson for all of us, even uh, pastors and leaders of other organizations uh, that deal with people. Uh, we need to not be concerned with numbers, how many, but we need to be more concerned with the quality of information that we're giving to them. Right. So we, we're going to give them our all and, and so that they can take that, receive that, And they can grow thereby. And then once you disciple one, if that's what it is, that's how discipleship works. You disciple one and then that one will disciple and they will keep discipling. Yes. And it just goes on and on and on. So that is awesome. Now, as I shared with you earlier, we have these clubs that are functioning in the middle school and the high school. And we know that they are uh, there. <clears throat> we, we hear a lot about them. Uh, they are doing a lot of good things, uh, being a Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, FCA. I am not aware of anything else, not to say that there are no other clubs. Well, I'll go back and I'll say I, I do know at Madras Middle School, we had a club called Girls of Faith. Uh, that was a girls club only. And the, the teacher that started that and worked that club, she was reaching out to young ladies and just really ministering to them. But it's awesome that you all have this going in the elementary school. That is an awesome thing because it's needed. Yeah. Well, we had so many children and they, they might go to church or they might not. It was pretty right. much a range. And right. But even if they did, many times they might have heard the truth but not understood it. We would just hone every year. We would try and make it simpler and simpler um, so they could understand what the Bible was saying, that Jesus died to pay for everything they had done wrong. And it was a free gift given to them if they would just believe. Mm -hmm. And so many children would come back and say, I thought I had to, you can fill in the blank, I had to be good, I had to go to the right church, I had to say the right words. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was free and that God would give it to me Mm -hmm. freely if I would trust in Jesus. And that was our, that was the good news that we gave to them, that, that this life is, this eternal life, this forgiveness, this becoming his child is a free gift by a loving God. The Bible is true, you can depend on it, you can trust in him. And I was always amazed at how hungry the children were and how much they wanted to hear that message. When we teach, we didn't have problems with discipline. So, I mean, there were a couple years we did. Yes. Really good kids, but hard after school to be still. Mm -hmm. Um, But they would just sit on the edge of their seats almost to hear the message. Mm -hmm. Had so much fun. A lot of laughter, a lot of funny skits, a lot of games, and a lot of truth being taught, too. To the children. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. And and like you said, um, they were, they had heard it, but they didn't understand it. Right, it wasn't said in children's language. Yeah. Or sometimes we want to, I don't know, we want to say it differently. And the Bible is so plain. Yes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be yes. saved. He that believes in me. And we want to say it in maybe words we think they'll understand, but... 
it's right. confusing to them. So right. we just kept breaking it down because these are not children who understand what I call church words. Right. They've never right. heard them. They don't right. know what they mean. So we tried to say it in really plain language. And because they're so young. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trusting that they're understanding what's taking place in the classroom. Hmm. That's always the goal is that they are understanding what's taking place in the classroom. But now you're talking about, you know, biblical understanding. So if you don't break it down, if you don't make it simple, and, and, and the, I, th I think too that the, the fact that they were in there together, peers, yeah, right. same peer group, same young minds, they had a chance to really perhaps grasp the, under, the understanding of what you are teaching because you all were breaking it down. You were making it simple because you, you didn't have to speak above them, but you, you spoke on their level because you, everybody in there was, they were children and they were of the same peer group for the most part. Right. And we tried to make it as interesting as yes. fun. Yes. There's something about laughing, especially after you've been in school all day and you're yes. a little tired, something about laughing that just releases and they can remember. And we tried to t teach them things they would remember 10 years from now. Wow. They might be a little young. To, most of them weren't, but some of them were a little young to understand it. Or uh -huh. 10 years from now, would they remember this song or this verse or that wow. we repeated this one thing over and over and would they get it then? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and that took um, not deep studying, but just some type of strategy to reach them. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to go deep uh, to study, you know, the Greek words or the Hebrew words or anything like that. But you just had to have a plan or strategy to reach them. Games that would reach them. Like you said, things that they could remember uh, 10 years from now. Well, we're going to repeat this, you know, every day. Something very simple, and, and I believe that 10 years from now, they will remember this. So it was just a, a, a probably, I would say, uh, just a simple strategy to reach them. Right, and prayer. Oh, we prayed. In oh, fact, yes. I still know the names. I still know wow. nine years of children, and wow. I, sometimes I'll remember a face and not a name, but most of the time I remember the names, or I'll ask another worker and say, who is this one? And wow. I still pray for them. Awesome. But during the week, we would all pray. We might have a child that had a problem sitting still, or, or maybe they were angry because yes. they, whatever, they'd uh -huh. been bullied, or maybe they were bullying, uh -huh. and we would pray all week long, and, awesome. and we saw God do amazing things in awesome. the children. Because prayer does work. Yes. Prayer works. I mean, my God, if we could, if we could do better, we all could do better to take more to God in prayer about the things that are going on around and about us, um, and we would see some changes. Yes. We would see some changes. Yes. Some definite changes. And just once they believe and and Christ comes and lives in them, the change that we saw there. Yeah, children that awesome. could not could not keep from hurting other children or children that just did not have any control. We saw a change in them. The last wow. day of one of them, the mo one mother came to me and said, you know, three years ago, she was being suspended many mm. times in a month because wow. she would kick people. Or, and, and this year, she got the kindness award. Oh and she said, goodness. I don't know what the difference is. Her medication is the same. And I said, well, I think the difference is she believed in Jesus. And oh, I think awesome. that made the difference. That is awesome. Because he does those kinds of miracles and he does that kind of work. Yes, he does. In us. He makes the change in us. Um, and, and especially when we receive him. And in, it, it, like you said, if you're teaching these children and you're reaching these children, then you should expect to see some change. Yes. And I, and, and I do believe that we, too, ourselves as teachers, we need to have faith that, listen, I know she's been kicking in my head. <laughs> I know she's been getting suspended. But I'm going to have the faith that as I pray, and as I continue to teach, that we will see a change. Because too often as teachers, we have to deal with those kinds of problems. And we are just like, our head is spinning. And we're just like, okay, well, if you can do something, please do. Because I just don't see it. Yes. But 
it's not up to us to say it. If we know the good news and if we know the power of prayer and the power of God that <clears throat> he uh, exercises through us, then we ourselves have to have that faith and to believe when they don't believe. Yes, and that if you can't see something happening, it doesn't mean there's nothing happening. Exactly. I remember as a child what was going on inside me, but I wasn't letting anyone see that. So I just trust that God is working in their hearts as as we present his word and as we pray for these children, that God is working even when I can't see it. Amen, amen, uh. that is awesome. And that's what he does. That's exactly what he does. So my my um, goal, Susan, and my thought process after Tammy shared with me about you and what was taking place was to have you here, talk with you, and to hopefully spark an interest to our radio listeners, those that are attending different churches, and you have um, students in elementary school, and you're thinking, wow, this will be a good opportunity to start a good news club or be a part of it. Tell us how, or can you tell us how that can work or how it should work? Um, there is a, it's Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF. Okay. I believe it's something like CEF.org. Okay. Um, but if you look it up, Child Evangelism Fe- Fellowship, Good News Clubs, Amy Hardiman uh-huh. is the um, Southern Crescent director. Okay. Is and she local? She is. Well, she's, I believe, Stockbridge. Okay. okay. McDonough, Stockbridge area. Okay. But she handles all this area down here. Uh-huh. And um, she will walk you through it. There is a training that goes on. We have to be trained in child safety, very strict rules for how we can keep our children safe okay and how and then they train how to teach the materials and they give you freedom in that but you teach their materials your way kind of you you can it's not super strict um and we have lots of workshops and things that will help us know games and i did one on skits and different things like that and and then you're ready to go out and they will walk with you they'll answer your questions they go to your principal and 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 they know how to um open one in the schools and work with the schools okay and um, And you said was it amy amy hardeman h-a-r d-e-m-a-n she is the um director of the southern crescent which is our area okay. down here okay and it's cef which is child evangelism fellowship yes and, and then, that is that is the online yes um, and then okay um because like i said we have this thing going on in middle school and high school and my friend um uh, Matt Brass um, is over it. I think I'm called Rob Brass, not Matt. I think Matt may be his son, somebody. <laughs> but Rob Brass, he's over Fellowship of Christian Athletes for this county, um, and he's a, do, he's doing and has done an excellent job of carrying out that mission for the middle schools and high schools, and he's he has done so much with this. And so uh, we need to, and especially in this hour, especially in this hour, we really need to reach other um, schools, elementary schools. We, We need to get the elementary schools really, really involved. And like you said, you all were running uh, well with it until COVID hit. Right. Which is, which was a problem for so many people. Um, and you think that some people have started back, but you're not altogether sure. Yeah, I'm sure some have. Yes. I don't know about in Coweta County. Okay. I know up around McDonough, some have, and a lot have been online. And there is one that anyone can go online and see it, too. Okay. Um, and I hope they're going to start opening up. Some of the schools have 200 kids in their clubs, and they, wow. ha- they have to break them down into different sm- groups. Yeah, the great groups. We we didn't. We had we broke them down into tables of small, so we could deal with a smaller. Yes, yes. But um, they have huge clubs in some of the larger schools. Wow. So. Which would be the same way with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They have uh, large meetings um, 
what I know at Madras, the entire side of, of the gymnasium, one side of the gymnasium, the stadium, the, the um, bleachers are packed. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. And, and you're talking about 300 plus kids. And then you would have some on the floor in front of it. So we really do need to, and, and, and the children need to be able to leave elementary school from um, the Good News Club, come to middle school, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, then leave middle school and they go into uh, the, the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the high school. And I just think it, it needs to be happening. It needs to be done um, <clears throat> because we're living in the last of last hours and we need to be reaching children at all costs because like you said, and it's the same way with FCA, there are so many kids that will show up for that club meeting and they do not go to church. And they will tell you, but I want to go to church but my parents don't take yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, my parents don't believe in going to church. They won't take me to church. Or I've never been to church. And they will come. They will come religiously, if I may use that term, every time the, uh, and I'm speaking from the uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, every time we meet, and we were meeting like every Friday. Um, and I think things kind of changed when, when uh, after COVID. But we were meeting every Friday. And so they will come every Friday to that club. Hmm, that's great. I went to something similar when I was in high school, Youth Ranch it was called, and oh, okay. and we had a, a very large, excited bunch of kids too, yes. getting your friends involved in that. I had one mom, um, we would take them out to their cars if they didn't go to after school, and she said, uh, my daughter, I, I brought her because she asked so many questions about God, and I was not raised to know anything. I have no answers. So um, she brought her so she could have answers. And, and awesome. then she began to share those answers with her mom. There you um, go. And that happens so many times. It is so often the kids will get what they need, and they will then turn around and start talking to the parents. Yes. And that's, you know what? Hey, if that's what it takes, mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah. We have to, we sh should be in the business of reaching the lost at all costs. That's right, at every opportunity. And this, well, since COVID, it's not been as open a door, but I believe it will open. It's beginning to open. Yes. At the time that that was shut down, there were so many schools asking, please bring a club here. And we just didn't have churches Enough to people. do it. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, there's going to be a time where maybe we won't be allowed back in. There was a time when we weren't before. Yes. And this was a time of open door. Yes. Let's take these opportunities. Let's take tell the these. It did not take. It was an hour, hour and a half. Our club was an hour and a half. Some are an hour. It was an hour and a half a week and preparation. And it was just a joy to do it. And now, did you meet once a week? Once a week. Wow. Right. Wow. An hour and a half once a week. That's not, that's nothing. And you know, this is the thing, Susan. So many people, they're not doing anything. I know that sounds judgmental, but it's true. Right. It's true. And you didn't have to teach. I mean, we had people who loved to teach. I loved yes. to t teach. And we had teenagers who would teach. And we had people who would be the, you know, the, the attendants and the administration. But we also had people who just loved on the kids. Yes. Tammy right. was great at that. I know. Um, and they I know. loved Miss Tammy. Um, and so you didn't have to come pre prepared. You just came and right. loved the children. And, right. Uh, but, you know, and it's like I said, it's so many, it's, it, it, and again, uh, the, the hope of this broadcast and the prayer of this broadcast would be to spark an interest for someone to say, look, you know, um, maybe I can get back in the elementary school and start doing some things. I mean, why not? Everybody's going to the game. Everybody's going to everything else. Let's get back in the schools and start doing what we need to do. So maybe I can go in and start something because it's so much to be done and very few people doing it. Right. I, I, I really feel the heart uh, of God when he inspired the writer to say that the harvest is yet plentiful, 
but the labors of few. I really, I, I feel the heart of God because that's where we are now. I mean, the laborers are few. We, we can't find too many people that's willing to work in the vineyard and to put their hand to the plow. Now, uh, for me, uh, it would be a cinch for me to do it. I just don't have any more room on my plate to do it. I just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing so much already. There's no way I can fit that in my schedule. But what about everybody else that's not doing Right. Anything. And it, a lot of the clubs have older people that aren't working. They're retired. They can do yes, it. Yes, that would be awesome. They, I mean, they, we had eight or ten teenagers that helped us. We had moms. We had older people. Some of the clubs are, it's mostly older people. And kids need grandparents, too. You know, they, they just do. need someone they to do. love them and to tell them the they truth. Do. They do. And that's what they did. And, and they have big clubs, too. Yes. Um, so anyone, absolutely anyone, you don't need, tra- you don't need, you know, a, a degree in Bible. No, you don't need years of being a believer. No. You just need a heart that you want to share this truth with these children. Yes. And, you know, if you think about it, if you would go in a group of believers and say, how many of you trusted Christ as a child? I would say most of them did. Wow. Because children's hearts are just so open. They're just yes. so, and um, so it. The harvest in an elementary school is great. They are hungry. They are seeking. They recognize this is truth, and they believe. Yes, because children are so much wiser now than we were back in our day. They're they're wiser to a greater truth about God. Yes. And, 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 And really a truth that they don't yet understand. Right. But, it, you know, they're not burdened down with so many other things. They can take the simple gospel, which is what Christ gave us, so yeah. simple. Mm-hmm. And they they don't have to dress it up. They can take it just as he gave it. Yes. Believe on me, and I will give you everlasting life. And they will believe that. Amen. Amen. And that's, that is so awesome. So um, when we... I guess really what we need to do, which is what we, I, I believe you have been because we talked about it earlier, and, and surely I have, need to pray now yes. for laborers in the, har- in the vineyard because the harvest is truly plentiful. There are so many people that are seeking for the things of God. They're seeking for better. And they're seeking for more. And um, they're not really looking anymore for the world, uh, the things that the world will offer them. They're looking for something greater, something that's real. I really, I, I, I discern that in my spirit because we have been we have been those that in in days past where we wanted what the world had to offer. You know, we wanted the big cars. We wanted the houses. We wanted the the fame. We wanted money. We wanted this. But then 2020 showed us this is not really what you need. Because it's not going to, it really has little value to what you really need. And that is Jesus. Right. We need the good news. We need to know about God and what he's doing and what he wants to do. So I'm saying all of that to say we need to pray for laborers so that we can reach these people and give them what they really need. Yes. Because they, I really, like I said, I really discern in my spirit that I'm not saying that people are quitting their jobs and, oh, I don't want to work anymore because I'm going to heaven. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that people are now getting a grip. Not everybody, because it's never really everybody. Uh, But people are getting, uh, uh, they're getting a grip on life and I believe they are looking at the state differently, especially, again, after 2020. Because 2020 shut down some things and 2020 said, Okay, uh, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? 
That's true. And think of what it did to the children. I mean, when I was growing up, it was the Cuban Missile Crisis. We had to get under our desk, you know, or we had to go in the bomb shelter in case, you know, the Russians or Cuba had sent Mm -hmm. a nuclear. But think about COVID and all the things that are going on and all the political stuff that's going on and all the things on the Internet and the dangers that children are in that I never had. And these children are dealing with that, and they can know. They can know that they have eternal life. They can know that God is with them. They can know they can go to him, that he will hear their prayers, that they're not alone, to be able to tell them that good news. Yes. And, you know, if we we have people that are reaching these children, I don't know if you saw this uh, on the news, but um, this young, this little boy, um, and and, and I think uh, it was what his parents had taught him and probably you know his attendance in church but anyway um, and I want to make sure that I you know I seem to be corrected but I, I remember it for the most part but anyway somebody kidnapped the child but he was in the back of a car I do remember, remember that you know I do about? yes he was in the back of the car and I think he was singing one of uh, Marvin I mean not Marvin Marvin Sapp's songs and the kidnapper put them out and and I'm sharing that to say when we can get this to these children like you said they know if anything crazy ever happened to them they know that they have eternal life it'll it'll register in their spirit and in their minds uh, this is what Miss Burdett taught me that I'm I have eternal life with Jesus. Uh, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And who knows? They may even start preaching to the person that kidnapped them. You know what I'm saying? They can hear stories of Joseph and how his brother sold him into slavery and he ended up in prison. And then he ended up second to the Pharaoh. And then even though things look so bad, God was always in control. God had a plan. They can remember those things. And, um, Moses, all the stories that we tell him, and then the stories wow. in the New Testament of the power of God yes. and the love that he has for them. I remember as a child, I, I became a believer as a, a young child. Mm-hmm. I remember verses, you know, what time I'm afraid I will trust in thee. Yes. So they would learn verses too, and there's awesome. things that, you know, they can say back, they can awesome. remind themselves of. Just so much that yes. um, can help a child get through some of this hard stuff. Because they need that help, right? Right. And they need, you know, we had we had children who behaved very well, and we had children who didn't. Right. We had children who had different emotional problems or behavioral problems. Mm-hmm. But for them to know that they were loved, they were accepted, they were one. Now, they knew their parents did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But someone else <clears throat> accepted them and knew that, they weren't bad kids. Right. This was hard for them. Yes. This is hard. Yes. And they're doing their best, but it maybe it doesn't look so good to us, but they're trying their best. Wow. That that was a, a safe place to come. And the, I'm sure the classroom was too, but one more person couldn't hurt. Wow. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, and that's that's so powerful uh, that you're, you all taught these different um, stories in the Bible that was so real, so true, and those stories helps. They help us to know how to live our lives yes. and know how to trust God. Right. Know that when I'm in a difficult time, if God did it for Moses, if He did it for Joseph, then certainly He'll do it for me. That's exactly yeah. what we would tell them. You know. Awesome. Same. Awesome. Same God. <laughs> same right. God. Same care, same love, same protection. And we would and we would tell them if if God created the earth, is there anything he can't do? Oh wow. If God gave his only son for you to die, is there anything he would not do for mm. you? He would out of love do anything that was necessary and he would know what was best. Wow. Um, so. Because what we don't realize is that <clears throat> They may not, we may not see, and and it's our prayer that they will never get kidnapped, but it's unfortunate that so many children are going through 
utter chaos in their own home. And they need this just to be able to survive in their own homes. Yes, yes. Um, we, we were not ever aware of homes that our children were in danger. We certainly right, would have reported right. that. Absolutely. But you never do you know never that. Know. You never yeah. do know that. And even if they were coming from good homes, it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't mean that they that wouldn't face healthy. something. They yeah. wouldn't face something outside of their home. Or, yes. or you know all these the stories with the Internet and what kid, the oh, danger yeah. that they're in now. Yes, yes. Um, and just... To be able to reach the parents through the children was a wonderful thing, and brothers and sisters would come, or yes. or they would go home and share this good news with their friends. Just amazing to see amazing. what God, small things that God can use in big ways. And yes. even sometimes it's not your words, it's your eyes or your hands or your mouth, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just that fragrance of Christ that, that a child could sense. Um, yes, yes. And uh, children, one thing about children, they will, they will speak the truth. Yes. They, well, let me just, let me kind of fix that up. We know that some of them will tell what we would call little fibs. <laughs> but when they know a truth like this, they will speak it. If you all are pouring this into them, and this is what I'm trying to say. They will speak. They will go and speak that truth. Yeah. They will do that quicker than an adult. We would give them tools, too. There's something that um, Child Evangelism uses a lot. It's one of my favorites. It's a wordless book. Okay. And it's colors that tells the story of Christ. Okay. So um, we, we would start with the last page is shiny gold to stand okay. for heaven. And we'd say, have you ever read a book where it was such a good story that you had to go to the back of the book and see okay. how it ended. Okay. Well, this is the best story in all of time in all of the world. So okay. we're going to go to the back and we'd show them the word, the gold shiny page. This is heaven. It's a perfect place. There's no sin or sorrow. Uh -huh. There's no death. There's no sickness. You're never afraid. Uh -huh. And and then we go, but the first page is, um, this is the bad news, and it's okay. dark like night with no moon or stars. You can't see, mm -hmm. and this stands, this represents things we do wrong. The Bible calls sin anything that doesn't please God, Okay. and the Bible says we all do it, all of us, mm -hmm. and the next page is red, and you say this stands for Jesus when he died on the cross for us. He paid for all our sin, and then the white page is when we believe he gives us his righteousness and takes our sin. He trades places with us. Okay. And then the last page. And when we have believed and our sins have been washed away, then we know we can go to heaven. So we would send them home with tiny little wordless books. They could share that message. We had other things okay. with those colors that we wow. could send home, and they could go home and tell their parents what they learned that day. Wow. So, that is um, awesome. And they could remind themselves with it, too. That so. is awesome. That is so um, awesome. Because I do know that when children uh, learn a truth like that, they will they will go and they will share. Um, because we have small kids in our church, and my daughter is the uh, youth person. She's a youth teacher, um, and she's over. She teaches at uh, Poplar Road Elementary School, and she's over the education department for the church. And um, it's so funny with the things that. Um, the kids are learning, and then they will come back and say, I told my dad that, or I told my yeah. mom that, or I told my friend that at school. And um, I told her, I said, see, that's the thing about children. When you tell them something, it's best to tell them the truth and to tell them something good because they will share it. Right. And they will share what's not They're very good. bold. They're yes. very bold. Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> and like I said, they will be bolder to me than some adults. Because they will just, they feel like, especially this good news, they feel like this is what I'm supposed to say. Yes. And God really uses them to share and to spread the gospel uh, in their own little way. Yes. I mean, it makes, it, it, sometimes it will make an impact. I've heard stories of parents coming to their senses and saying, wow. If my children believe in this, what is wrong with me? Hmm. And they come to their senses and they say, you know what? I need to start going to church. 
And then when they start going to church with their children, then they receive Christ. Yes. Now the family is doing better. It changes families. Yes, yeah. yes. So that is so powerful. But I'm so, I'm excited about this. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm again, my prayer and my hope for this is that we will spark an interest in some other parents, grandparents, right? Uh, just believers. You don't have to have a call on your life. You don't have to be the pastor. You don't have to be the evangelist. You can just be a believer in Christ Jesus that you want to go and be a part of this and, and help spread the good news with these young people in these elementary schools, right? Right. God, I mean, we all have the same amount of Christ in us once we believe. Yes. So absolutely. it's it's... That's who's doing the work. He's oh, yeah, just absolutely. using us. So as we trust in him, he does the work through us. So it does. It, we don't have to be anything big deal. I'm not. I'm just a mom. Yes, um, a, a mom who believes in Christ. Yep. Yeah, and that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Um, and we hope that somehow, some way, what we've shared and what we've talked about, and I am going to share uh, the information on uh, the faith Facebook post uh, with uh, the website and uh, the young lady's name that's uh, over the Southern Crescent area. I'm going to share that on Facebook and hopefully someone will uh, become interested uh, in helping. We've got to. We need to. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, we've got to put our hand to the plow and start doing the work. It seems like we try so many things, good things, yes. and there's nothing wrong with it to reach people. Well, here's the thing. You just step into it. Yes. It's waiting for you to waiting reach these children. You. Yes. Yes. And children are, they are... They're like sponges. I think you said that earlier uh, before we started. They're, they're like sponges. They're ready to grab. They're hungry. So they're grab. hungry. Whatever you give them. There's a sense in them that just wants to know God, wants yeah. to know truth, wants to, and wants to, there's just something in us that wants that. And, and before we get older and we have all these distractions, these children, they've still got that simple hunger. Yes. Um, and, you know, I'll say this as we're getting ready to bring this to a close. Um, it's better that we reach, it's better that we reach them for Christ rather than letting others uh, reach them for Satan and his kingdom. Yes. Because he's at work at this too. And he's after the children. Yes. He's after the children. We need to be after the children. Believers, we need to be reaching the children. We don't need to leave them open and vulnerable for them to accept whatever is coming to them. Because as a middle school, as an elementary school teacher, I taught at Northside Elementary School, then I moved to Madras, well, no, I moved to Evans Middle School, and then to Madras. Um, I saw... Um, I saw a lot with these children. I saw a lot with them. And uh, they would come in, because middle school starts in sixth grade. They will come in in sixth grade, and you can tell the ones that were already troubled. And it was always our, our hope and, and our prayer that we could reach them by, before they left the middle school. Some we did, some we did not. Some we did most we did not because they had already been pulled in a, in, the, in a wrong direction in elementary school. And so all the way through fifth grade, they're dealing with this thing and doing stuff that's, you know, crazy. Uh, then they come right into the middle school in sixth grade and, and it gets worse because now you're meeting kids from other areas. So basically bottom line is we need to reach them while they're young. Yes, before they, you know, that old a lie often repeated is believed as truth. So the older they get, the more they've heard the lie. Yes. So we need to tell them the truth. Before they get the lie. And we need to repeat it and repeat it and repeat yes. it. 
Mm. Wow, that is awesome. That's awesome. And Susan, it has been a joy talking with you today about the Good News uh, Club. And you and I will pray. And of course, I'm sure Tammy will too because she's, she's excited about listening to this. And I'm going to let her know that it will be posted to, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tag her in it when I post it to Facebook. Um, and she will pray with us. And, and prayerfully, others will pray with us so that this thing can kick off again and we can take advantage of the opportunity that's awaiting uh, so many to start this Good News Club in their elementary school. Well, I'm really excited to see what God will do As from this. Yes. yes. Let's pray. Let's pray that it will happen. Let's pray that it will happen. Uh, so that's what we will do. Um, again, I want to thank my good friend, uh, Pastor Jimmy Ellison, for allowing this spot. And until I come back with you all next Tuesday, perhaps, um, be blessed, be safe, and know that Jesus loves you. Amen. Does your internet give you unlimited wireless with 5G? Of course, and my wireless saves me 400 bucks a year. That's because you both have Xfinity. Internet and wireless so good, it keeps one-upping itself. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $20 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Get $300 back when you add Xfinity Mobile. Plus, save up to $400 a year on wireless over AT&T. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. It's 11, 15, 21. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus. Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Savings based on optimized pricing. Xfinity Internet required. $300 offer. It's 11, 21, 21. Requires new line activation. Other restrictions apply.